channel welcome to NaNoWriMo Camp NaNoWriMo April week three it is now Thursday I totally forgot to vlog this week but I also haven't been doing a lot for NaNoWriMo so it's not really that big of a deal <laughs> but I'm back and if you guys have missed my previous two videos the first one explained that I was going through this Camp NaNo doing two projects at once project Dream and Project Dragon, revising Project Dream and plotting and planning Project Dragon, basically. Last week, I finished my reread of Project Dream and I did my giant outline. I did a bunch of planning and all that kind of stuff. And that's all in my previous two vlogs. But this week, I, so far, I guess I should catch you up on what I've been doing. I have started working on draft four. I am very minimally into this. I'm only 1500 words into it. And I've set a goal of like 80,000 words. I don't know if that's gonna be a thing, but it's, we're gonna see where we get to. I've started that and I did send my outline to my critique partner to see what she thought about it. And she gave me like an overall, just like a yes, this is a fantastic outline. And then of course there's one or two things that's like, oh, like you should think about this. I'm like, yeah, definitely. I didn't even realize that. So I'm happy with, with that and we're gonna see how this uh, draft goes. Other than that, nothing really huge is going on. Uh, this week, it's, it's currently Thursday, so this is coming to the end of my work week and I tomorrow have a date, which is terrifying. <laughs> you guys didn't know, very, very single very very terrified of change so this is big for me it's not it's like a socially it's virtual it's it's fine we're basically going to be playing a, a, a like a personal one shot of dungeon and dragons he's creating it a one shot for me which is super sweet because that's kind of how we started talking a few days ago it's only been a few days too so i'm legitimately terrified <laughs> But that's tomorrow and the panic has been real, but um, there's that. And then Saturday is my live stream, which I usually have. So that's about all that's going on this week. Just continuing to, to kind of go through this. I think a goal of mine is probably gonna be to like hit 5K in this draft and to do more work on Project Dragon. Last night I did have a brainwave for something in Project Dragon how I'm gonna implement it, I don't know. But I just kind of sat in my notes app. I was also scrolling through Pinterest, making a Pinterest board for Project Dragon. <laughs> just aesthetics and stuff. And I ended up getting a brainwave about one of the characters and how like that possibly could politically tie into this story. I'm not entirely sure yet how that's gonna go. It's a lot of question marks in my notes app. I'm just looking at it on my computer. Just a lot of question marks is like how I'm actually gonna implement this, but it's, it's always exciting to get a brainwave. I'll have to do some some thinking to see how it can tie into the story, if it even does, but that's where that is. That's that's about it. That's all that's, that's going on. I haven't really done any solid work as of yet this week, so hopefully today, tomorrow, Saturday, definitely, because my live stream, I will turn that around and we'll see what kind of work I get done this week, but just thought I'd start this vlog. I hope you're all doing well, and I'll catch up with you later.
Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, I am here. It is cold in my house, hence the reason I'm wearing a sweater and a sweater. <laughs> I just wanted to pop in because I realized I hadn't really been updating you guys this week about any nano stuff. So this vlog might be very short and I do apologize. <laughs> this week, what have I been doing? Uh, yesterday was my live stream and I finally got back into writing draft four of Project Dream. Everything is going great with that. I think I've not quite hit the 5,000 word mark in that draft, but I think I might go and do some of that now to like get a little bit more in. I haven't really done any work on Project Dragon. I really need to, because <laughs> this, it's, uh, we're going into the last two weeks of April, so, or the last almost two weeks of April. I don't remember how it cuts off, but. <sighs> Things are going okay. Yesterday the stream was fantastic. We just had a great time, had great conversations about the writing process and like where everybody's at in their own drafting process and all that kind of stuff. So that's super awesome. And I'm loving where Project Dream is going. I actually have, I think, written up to chapter three so far, but it's technically up to chapter six in my original draft because I've just like condensed <laughs> everything. Because that was one thing that Erin, my critique partner, said that like the beginning felt a little bit like she just kept wanting to get to the inciting incident and it just took a while to get there. So to like condense things and kind of move things around, make the beginning more interesting. So that's what I've been doing. I've been condensing and moving things around and everything's great. So I think I think we're off, off to a good start for draft four. I'm liking it a lot. So that's awesome. <laughs> uh, but other than that, not a lot, whole lot's going on. It's Sunday, we just came back from a drive. I've been reading books from my other video uh, that I'm filming that you guys will see probably in May. So everything's going okay. Everything is going great. Did I mention anything about my date in this? I think I did. So I had my date on Friday and it was okay. It was fine. <laughs> it was just, it was fine. Virtual did take a little bit of the anxiety out of it, but I have high anxiety around dates. So that was a time. I died an hour into the one shot, so it kind of ruined everything, but that's okay. It was fine. <laughs> it was fine. And then yesterday my live stream and today I have book club at three. So we are talking about Son of a Trickster, which is awesome. I didn't really love Son of a Trickster, so there's that, but I'll talk to you guys later. Hello, my lovely friends. Happy Monday. I decided why not take you into my bathroom. This is not my bathroom. This is like the main floor bathroom and uh, get my hair sorted and chat to you guys because I'm putting together the footage for this vlog and I realized that this vlog is so short. <laughs> I have seven minutes of footage right now. So sorry for this really, really short vlog, but that's what uh, you're gonna get this week, unfortunately. <laughs> I realized last time I was talking to you guys, I cut off really quickly about Son of a Trickster because my dad walked down the hallway and I was like, well, I don't wanna vlog in front of my dad. So uh, yeah, Son of a Trickster, I read last week and I didn't really love it a whole lot. It really disappointed me, but I guess that's fine. I'm having such a bad reading year, you guys. <laughs> Nothing is going my way, uh, but Cinema Trickster was, I don't know, I think I was expecting more magic to come out of it from the previous like indigenous literature that I have read in my life that includes a magical storyline like I thought Son of a Trickster would and it, it does but it's not strong enough for me. Usually those books have that like leaking through everything that it does. It makes it such a wonderful experience to read those books because it follows the indigenous culture and it usually follows like indigenous storytelling and just creates this beautiful experience reading a book by an indigenous author. For example, a few of the indigenous books that I read in my course, I totally picked out Mrs. Dalloway, wrong one. In my uh, indigenous literature course that I took in university, we had a good variety of different books that we read. Please excuse my really wet hair. Um, like Green Grass, Running Water by Thomas King. This uses like indigenous storytelling and trickster and it uses it so well. And this is one of my favorite books like that I've ever read ever. 
And then the Marrow Thieves uses culture really well, even though this is a like dystopian in the future narrative, it uses the culture of indigeneity and the aspect of residential schools back into the storyline. It, it, it's, it's done pretty well. And then like we have the break, which uses family really, really well. And it doesn't have any magical aspects to it, but it just is heartbreaking and it revolves around family specifically, specifically the women in family and that kind of stuff. And then we have Moon of the Crested Snow, which uses the horror elements really well. And I, I use these as examples because Trix, uh, Son of a Trickster promises sort of a horror magical novel about this kid, Jared, who's like coming of age, it's a coming of age novel. And it promises this book of like being on the edge of just growing up as a teenager, as an indigenous teenager who has been like slightly separated from his culture and this like magical aspect to his bloodline being the son of a trickster. And I would just, I wish it could have done so many things better. Like each of these does like the indigenous trickster storytelling really well because this deals with coyote storytelling and like the looping of that. That aspect super well. This does deals with like culture and the residential schools really, really well. And then this does deals with family really well. And I wish that like all three of these do things in a better way than Son of a Trickster did, but <laughs> that's that's the thing. And the horror aspect, because there is a horror aspect to Son of a Trickster. This does it even better than Moon Over the Crusted Snow. Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wab Gishig Rice. This is a fantastic book, by the way. All of these, very good books. And then I also have Braiding Sweetgrass by <laughs> Robin Wall Kimmerer, which it has nothing to do with my discussion here. But yeah, I don't know. I, I wish I wish there was more in that. And even my friend who basically was like, we're gonna read Son of a Trickster this, this go around. She was the one who picked it. She read Monkey Beach by Eden Robinson and she absolutely loves Monkey Beach. And she said that she wanted kind of what Monkey Beach did to be in Son of a Trickster and it wasn't. So I'm gonna try read Monkey Beach because I think that's gonna be better. Cause my main thing was that the magical, the, I keep saying magical, the mythological and cultural aspect of the novel didn't show up enough for me to keep that interest. Like we just kept dealing with Jared's really monotone, really shitty life. And then like every once in a while, not even enough to keep your interest, we had these aspects of like magic and like un unease come in. And I get that it's the first in a trilogy, but I just wish it had more. I said that in book club and my friend was like, well, you should read Monkey Beach because it does that more. It is a standalone narrative and it really brings in that aspect more. So I'm gonna probably read Monkey Beach soon. I don't actually own a copy, but when I can get my hands on the audiobook or on a copy of it at some point, I will be reading that one because I do like Eden Robinson's writing is fantastic. Like the way you can just be sucked into her stories is amazing. I just didn't really enjoy the story of Son of a Trickster. So there is that. That's what I wanted to explain to you yesterday. <laughs> As for Nano, I haven't really done any more work on it. I think today I'm going to see if I can do more work specifically on Project Dragon because I have not done any work on it and I really need to start going with these character interviews my other character interviews to really flesh out who I'm dealing with. And I have my world pretty much, like it's there in my head. I have the sanctuary, I have all that kind of stuff. And I know like some of the dragons and all that. So I think fleshing out my characters is gonna help me flesh out the story. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see this week where I get with that basically. So I know this vlog has been super, super short. So we're gonna end it here. <laughs> even though it's probably not even that long, it's probably not even close to the normal length that I usually do for vlogs, but I do apologize about the fact that I just didn't vlog anything this past week. I totally forgot that I was supposed to be vlogging, that it was NaNoWriMo. And then the, the high anxiety I felt from Wednesday into Friday, just completely destroyed my productivity and I couldn't concentrate on anything, that just ruined it. And I've just been coming off of that anxiety for the past few days. So hopefully this next week I am much more productive and we're gonna get closer to my goal of a, I pretty much have hit my goal for Project Dream. I have revised it and I've started draft four, which I didn't even think I was gonna be doing this Camp NaNoWriMo. So I finished my goal setting work with Project Dream. Project Dragon, I am very much slacking on. So we're gonna pick up the pace with Project Dragon and hopefully have a plot by the end of April. So 
If you haven't yet, subscribe so you can join me on this journey of writing these stories and creating these stories and also reading with me because I love it. Make sure to like this video if you liked it. I, again, apologize for it being so short, but sometimes that just happens. So I wish you guys all a fantastic Tuesday because I know it's Tuesday when you're watching this. I will catch you in another video soon. Stay kind and keep on writing. <laughs>